What do Lens Protocol, a POAP, and a Gitcoin Passport have in common? All of these protocols are ways to manage your identity on the blockchain. Lens Protocol attests to your on-chain social activities, POAP attests that you attended an event, and Gitcoin Passport attests to your contributions, activities, and reputation in the Gitcoin ecosystem. There are more than a dozen identity management protocols available today in the Ethereum ecosystem. Each of them is built for a specific use case, and each of them uses its own custom standards and interfaces. This is a problem for both, the developers and the users. As developers, we have to learn about each individual protocol and integrate them into our applications. This is a lot of work, and it's hard to keep up with all the new protocols that are being introduced regularly. As users, we have to create a new identity for each protocol that we want to use. This is not only inconvenient, but also makes it hard to manage our identities. What if there was a way to support all the protocols via a single base standard? This is where Ethereum Attestation Service comes in, or EAS for short. EAS is an open source infrastructure public good for making attestations on-chain or off-chain about anyone or anything. Note that because EAS allows anyone to create attestations about anyone or anything, the applications for EAS go far beyond just an attestation layer for identities. In the age of misinformation, verifying facts and proving the authenticity and trustworthiness of information become critical. In our offline worlds, people attest to things all the time. A notary attests that you signed a document, a doctor attests to your health, a university attests to your diploma, you attest to the posts and likes you make on social media, a bank attests you're qualified for a loan, and even your friends attest that they like you or that they trust you. The interactions are endless. At the heart of every interaction, whether it's a financial transaction or a simple online conversation, trust is essential. EAS enables anyone to make attestations on-chain or off-chain about anything. What is beautiful about EAS is that while it has numerous applications, at the core it is very simple. It only uses two simple contracts, the Schema Registry Contract and the EAS Contract. The Schema Registry Contract allows us to register any structured data about any topic. For example, if a university attests to your diploma, the schema could include your name, your major, and when you started and graduated from the university. Once we have registered your schema, we can use the EAS contract to make attestations using the registered schema. We can also optionally use resolver contracts, which enable you to add additional access control and features to your schema. For example, we can create a resolver that only allows university personnel to attest your diploma. Additionally, once your diploma has been attested, the resolver could also mint an on-chain badge that can act as an immutable record of your diploma. To understand how these contracts work under the hood, let's try to play with an actual application that works using EAS. Here is a simple social networking app called speaketh.org that shows how actions, such as a post, a like, or a reply, can be represented as a network of attestations. As you can see here, we have a familiar interface with a profile and a timeline with posts from different users, and you can create posts like and reply to any of these posts. In order to create a post, all we need to do is just sign a transaction. Similarly, you can like and reply to any post using a transaction. On each of these posts, we can see that there is a small badge that links to a website called EAS Scan. EAS Scan allows you to view and create attestations that follow the EAS standard. It's like EtherScan, but for attestations. Note that we can view attestations created by any application as long as they follow the EAS standard. Now, let's look closely at the attestation of this particular post. There are three important things here. First, the post schema defines the structure of a post. Second, the post attestation details that describe the post attestation. And third, 
the referencing attestations that connect the likes and replies to this post attestation. Let's start with looking into the post schema. If we look into the transaction hash here, we can see that this post schema was registered by calling the register function on the schema registry contract with these three parameters, the schema definition, the resolver address, and if the attestations created using this schema are revocable or not. Each registered schema also has a unique UID that can be used to reference a given schema. Now we know that we can create posts on the SpeakETH website using the interface. We also know that each of the posts on SpeakETH website are attestations created using the post schema. On the EAS scan website, we can see that there is a button to create an attestation using the post schema. What it means is that we can also use the EAS scan website to create a post on the SpeakETH website. Now that we understand the details of the post schema, our next step is to understand the post attestation details. Here, we can see that this is an on-chain attestation because the post was created by signing an on-chain transaction. If we look at the transaction, we can see that the attestation was created by calling the attest function on the EAS contract with these two sub-parameters. First is the schema UID that we discussed earlier, and second is a list of parameters that define the attestation. Similar to the schema, each attestation also has a unique UID that can be used to reference a given attestation. This brings us to our next part, which is the referencing attestations. As you can see here, we have a like and a reply post associated with this particular post. The like and the reply post are themselves attestations, which reference the post which helps us to interconnect different attestations, hence creating a network of interconnected attestations that form the social network. Taking a step back till now, we have discussed how SpeakETH works using on-chain attestations, where we create posts and likes using on-chain transactions. One thing that you may have noticed is that we are paying a small transaction fee every time we create a post or like a post. What if we can remove the need to do every interaction on-chain? This is where off-chain attestations come in. Let's try to use the EAS scan website to create an off-chain post attestation. All we need to do here is to provide two parameters. First will be the recipient of the attestation, which should be left blank because we are not replying to a post. The second will be the post content. Now we'll choose the off-chain option and proceed with creating an attestation, which will require us to sign the post data. As we expected, we now have an off-chain attestation. One thing to note here is that we have a private label on this off-chain attestation. The reason it is marked as private is because we have not published the attestation data anywhere yet. All the attestation data is actually encoded within the URL of this attestation page. This means that even the EAS scan website doesn't store our off-chain attestation data. Now, in order to publish our attestation data, we can use any data storage protocol, but in this case, we'll just use IPFS, which is a decentralized file sharing and storage protocol. Once we have published the attestation data on IPFS, we can see that the private label has now turned into the public label, and we can see the link to our data published via IPFS. To summarize what we have learned till now, we started with creating on-chain attestations on the SpeakETH website, and then we learned how we can create an off-chain version of SpeakETH website by using off-chain attestation. Now, the use cases we covered with the social networking app mostly involved public data, but there are other applications like finance and healthcare where you would not want your financial and health records to be made public. In such cases, we can use private attestations. There are many ways you can make your attestations private. As we saw with the private off-chain attestations, you can create an off-chain attestation and choose to not publish any data at all. But whenever you visit your doctor, you might want to selectively reveal details about your healthcare records. 
One of the ways to selectively reveal your private data is to use Merkle trees. Merkle trees are a data structure that allows you to prove that a piece of data is part of a larger set of data without revealing the entire set of data. Let's take a look at how this works. Let's say that we have a set of data that we want to keep private. In this case, we have a set of four numbers. We can create a Merkle tree out of this data by hashing each number and then hashing the hashes together. Now, if we want to prove that a number is part of this set, we can just provide the number and the hashes that are needed to prove that the number is part of the set. In this case, we can prove that the number three is part of the set by providing the number three and the hashes of one, two, and four. Now, let's see how we can use this to create private attestations. Here, we have a simple registered schema with a single field, private data, which will be the Merkle root of our private data. Let's create an attestation using this schema. As we can see here, we can create an attestation by providing a recipient address, which can be left blank, and the private attestation data, which will contain the private information that we want to reveal selectively. Once you sign the attest transaction, you will end up with an attestation. The created attestation only contains the private data hash representing the Merkle tree root. Note that even though the attestation is created on chain, this private data is only accessible to the original attester or those who have received and verified any proof of the data. Now, we want to selectively reveal the name and the age values from the private data. We will just check the respective boxes and generate the proof. Once your proofs have been generated, you can share them with individuals to verify your information. To summarize what we have learned till now, we saw how to use the EAS Scan website to create on-chain, off-chain, and private attestations. These examples just scratch the surface of what you can build with EAS. There are many more use cases that you can explore. EAS is being used by many projects in the Ethereum ecosystem already. Optimism uses it for its attestation station, which is used for managing on-chain and off-chain reputation data across the Optimism ecosystem. Gitcoin Passport uses it to verify and attest to users' skills and achievements, providing decentralized and immutable proof of credentials. Devfolio uses it to create attestations for users' votes in hackathons while covering any gas fees associated with the attestations. EAS is a relatively new project, but it has a lot of potential. It's fascinating to see how a simple idea can be used to build so many different applications. If you want to learn more about EAS or its use cases, you can check out the official documentation or join the Telegram group where you can find plenty of people who are willing to help you out.